Clone Wars Season 5 Thoughts. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including the season. And this video is going to be riffs and analysis for the season, not a review. I will do a spoiler-free review once I've watched all seasons. Since I won't get into the following in every single episode section in this video, I will just briefly say... Every episode so far has great creativity and designs. The action is engaging, very well choreographed. I'm invested in the stories and characters. Anything I don't comment on, presume I approve of. Not that this is only going to be negative. And my back is killing me, so this is going to be fast. So, starting with the first episode, Revival. Maul overpowers Savage. I love that the pi pirate ship is literally a flying saucer. And the brothers claim are attempt to be crime lords. Proud. Horny. Again, blue and red lasers for the different sides. And the Jedi fight the two brothers. And then it's Obi-Wan Obi -Wan versus the brothers. Very, very cool. And the brothers do end up regretting going to Hondo. Cost them an arm and a leg. And that brings us to a war on two fronts. We meet Saul Guerrera. Very cool. I understand why he was brought back after this. At this point, there is some infighting. They learn tactics, including how to take out destroyer droids. I didn't actually think the falling would happen, but it did occur to me that it would be funny if one of the destroyers went at 209 test on them. And the separatist attack, and the good guys manage to sneak into the city, which brings us to front runners. We get some urban warfare, and the king bites once into a fruit, then tosses the rest into the fire. Really tells you so much about who he is. Soul wants to go further than they have so far. They plan to knock out the power grid. The real life equivalent would be destroying supplies. Very tense and suspenseful when they're rolling grenades. I like that the person who can get the tank working is female. Basically, the separatists lose in this episode because they're too predictable, because they're so convinced that they'll win. They didn't stop to think that maybe they shouldn't send a tank. Maybe that was what the other side was planning for. And that is, you know, in the original trilogy, that is also, you know, they lose because they're so convinced they'll win. They're, they're so certain that if they just hit the other side really, really hard with seemingly overwhelming forces they must win and that brings us to the soft war in this episode the villain says we do not negotiate with terrorists communicating to the audience communicating to the audience that that is awful Saul's sister determines they have to try to free the king not Saul Saul really should have thought of this possibility when they were kids and he was teasing her and again, torture something evil does. I love when Saul says they're not terrorists, they're patriots. Very true. And the general helps the rebels. And regular people fight back against the droids. Love to see it. Next episode, Tipping Points. This episode acknowledges that terrorism led to the Patriot Act. A lot of rights were taken away from Americans using that as an excuse. Loving seeing Hondo again. Really sad when Saul's sister Lita dies. And yeah, Onderon was basically a proxy war, which, you know, yeah, does happen a lot in real life. Next episode, The Gathering. So they have to find their lightsaber crystals in the Fortress of Solitude. It did seem weird to me, the idea that they would leave the children in this icy area for 19 days, but it was a test, and it is the kind of thing the children would believe about adults. So the Star Wars equivalent of a smartphone has a self-destruct mechanism? Yeah, I can believe that. And they all learn lessons at the end, including that if they were trapped behind the ice, it was on their minds, dude. And... Test of strength. A test of strength. I appreciate that the droid challenges the racism expressed towards him. I think the point... Uh, let's see. 
I, th I think the point made that a Wookiee is a youngling is meant to be inclusive, but it comes across a little bit as a model, model minority to me. I like when the droid opens drawers with more arms than you thought, and just as the Wookiee requested, the droid got wood. More Hondo, excellent. At first it looks like Petro keeping the crystal is going to lead to a problem, but he manages to turn it into a boon instead, applying the knowledge that he and we learnt earlier that the lightsaber would explode if he had the crystal like that, knowing the pirate would be too greedy to be careful. Very tense with the smoking out. Great when the kids lure some pirates into the room with orbs, set off the orbs. It's one of those kinds of things where it would be pretty silly if these kids were able to fight better than the pirates that are several times bigger, heavier, and far more experienced than them. But luring them into a room and then setting off some stuff, that's entirely possible. And very home alone. Very cool when the droid fights as it loses arms. Yeah, I mean, it's only a flesh wound. Get off my ship. And Ahsoka ends up on the pirate ship. And next episode, Bound for Rescue. I always love seeing General Grievous. The kids infiltrate the carnival as acrobats. They wouldn't be ready for lightsabers if they weren't acrobatic already. Obi-Wan set the ship to self-destruct. Hondo, don't bonk the gonk. I like how the aliens are playing the drums by throwing balls onto the drum skin because they're not quite, they're not big enough to, to be doing, you know, like frequently drums. You have like sticks that you, you hit it with. Very cool when they use lightsabers at the end of the episode and a necessary bond. Very tense when they have to swerve to not go off the cliff, and Dooku wants revenge on Hondo. Miniature Jedi, you know, Jedi, but they're smaller, and they're freeing the prisoners, and my knees! Children! <laughs> I lost the word there for a second. And... Secret weapons. I like how useful the colonel, uh, let's see, proves himself to be, considering people of small stature are often thought of as not being as worthy as the ones not small. Early on, Wok was kind of annoying, but ultimately he does help prove the worth of an individual in a military operation. If he didn't challenge the colonel's orders, uh, you know, there would be a lot of mistakes. I like how each droid has their own skill or special equipment. It's very much like a heist, right down to complications during the heist. One and 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 you know thorough explanation of what they're going to do before it. And it's, yeah, one droid has their memory banks removed, and it's treated as no big deal by the organics. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Pop culture detective is right. Droids are slaves in Star Wars. I'll put the link to his video in the description box. At first, the colonel isn't even moved by the fact that the droid died, and arguably, it was the colonel's fault. Zero gravity is very useful for the good droids. Adorable when whack doggy paddles. I appreciate at the end, the colonel does seem to value droids more, and he's going to repair the one that he terminated. And... A sunny day in the void. The colonel still does not see BZ as an individual, just a tool. I quite like when R2 and the other astromechs leave, although the colonel says they should stay with the, quip, the ship. Rick, respect goes both ways. He keeps pulling rank on them, telling them they're less important than him, so now that they control the situation, because they're bigger than he is, they do. I just want to die with some dignity. Is that possible? Not even remotely. Colonel, the vessel has taken off. The Colonel sees Fata Morgana, which I'm not sure we've seen in Star Wars before, at least not live action or animation. I haven't read the books or comics. Really glad that that's now canon, because it does sound like a Star Wars thing. Wow, this episode got dark. I did not expect so many jokes about suicide. Maybe the ship crashed and I'm in limbo. I mean, unless they lowered the bar proportionally, I think you'd do great at limbo. They really hammer home the colonel's despair, and they decide to follow the bird stampeding. But Fossa better look out, that's all I'm going to say. And the colonel makes Wok a corporal, a non-corporeal corporal. The colonel thinks he's above all of the droids, Wack thinks he's above all the mechs. I appreciate this episode pointing out that if someone thinks less of you, you're likely to find someone to think even less of. 
you know, we know that the colonel partially got this mission because he's short, which he's unhappy about. You know, he's, he's self-conscious. Missing in action. Beat it. If it's getting cold, reheat it. Whack takes the colonel to the trash bins, and at least briefly, the colonel is like, the garbage will do. Is it possible that it's amnesia? I'm pretty sure there's a law that says that every melodrama that goes on for long enough will eventually do amnesia. What kind of law? Adage? Legal? First one, then the other. I like when the droids fight the diner guy. An amnesiac misplaced clone, a diminutive colonel, a droid that wants to be promoted, and three astromechs. This is the mission of mis misfits. Very much like the original trilogy. I love it. Save yourselves. Okay. Not gonna lie, that made me chuckle. Get the shuttle ready to roll. You intend to roll all the way to Coruscant? Self-sacrifice. You will be remembered, Mr. What's-His-Face. And... Point of no return. Descon still isn't listening to the concerns of the droids. Very clever with the holograms and blocking transmissions and all. Pretty funny when Whack puppeteers a partially destroyed battle droid to send the other battle droids off to look where they are. Like, the, the arm is still basically attached and working. So he's like, you know, oh, they went that way. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, that was, that was funny. So the whole thing is a massive bomb. Like Solo. Great choice of target. Where's Buzzy? Great fight between Buzz droids and our droids. And they use the vacuum of space rather than the brooms of Earth. But BZ goes with. R2-D2 sets the bomb to blow all of them up but survived. And we learn that Gascon will be with the team of droids for the rest of the war. And... That brings us to Eminence. Love seeing Mandalorians. You want to rub one out? Savage Opress attacks the medical droids. That is a very dangerous job to have in the Star Wars galaxy, especially if it's someone with a lightsaber and or force powers. And they start working with cream syndicates. Not a fan of the racist, racist orientalism and the Chinese coding of the leaders of one of the syndicates. And Savage cuts all the heads off, and we learn they will, well, most of them did. And we learn that they will also be working with the Pike Syndicate. Shades of Reason. They're going to cause chaos and then stage a solution. That is indeed a tool of fascism, especially for the rise of fascism. Duchess Satine is still a pacifist, she still passes on the fists. Super cool fight between Maul and Vizsla. The Lawless. Aren't you a little short for Mandalorian? So Corky lets the teen out of her cell, but another Mandalorian threats, threatens them. Fortunately, Bo burned him. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Callbacks are our only hope. It sounds like an internal affair. Uh-oh. If American media has taught me anything about those, they're all awful people trying to destroy everything for their brothers in arms. It's not great when one of the most hated things for cops are their cops. It's not my ship. It's my friendship. You flew all the way to Mandalore on nothing but friendship. My landing permit. Yes, it's right here. Right in here. Follow me, please. And we hear a punch land. One of the aliens stares in the direction of the ship like... Seriously, we're doing a third callback to A New Hope in a single episode? I do my own bidding, and that is why I have a substantial collection of antiques. Was it necessary to do two fake-out rescues of Satine from her cell? Uh, orders came from upstairs. No matter what galaxy you're in, that's always a great way to try to fake your way past. Very tense scenes between Obi-Wan and Maul, and legitimately sad when Satine is killed in front of Obi-Wan. Cool fight between Palpatine Maul and Savage Opress. Did not expect Savage Opress to die, and Palpatine says he has other uses for Maul. And Sabotage. I know the drill. Point it at the ground and turn it on. We want to do this free of assumption. We do not want to make an ass out of you an umption. Will ill will fill mill? And 
and uh, anti-war protests lead to terrorism in this episode. That does happen, but it's also a claim by Republicans to deter, deter left-wing American anti-war protests, which tend not go into violence, so it's nuanced. I guess the show gave the audience credit. Hopefully not too much. Both the computer simulation of the attack and when is a bomb not a bomb? This really reminded me of Iron Man 3. I approve. This was a really great mystery episode. And by the end of the episode, the notion that Jedi helped out with the terrorist attack has been definitively, definitively disproven by Russo! The Jedi who knew too much. Alfred Hitchcock is smiling in his grave. You shouldn't keep your master... But Oh, waiting. A lot of letter security. And she claims a Jedi taught her how to make the bomb and is forced choked before she can give a name, and Ahsoka is arrested. So, by the end of the season, we know that it was Barris. I'm not sure where she was supposed to be hiding. Like, this isn't... Um... Yeah, I guess I'm... Yeah. In in the... Uh, Tar Tartakovsky, Jendi Tartakovsky, Clone Wars... There you have one of the Force powers being invisibility, but that hasn't been a thing in this show or the movies, so, yeah, I, I don't know, I just feel like they, I, I can buy the rest of it, the the rest of the, the you know, cover-up, I, I don't have any credibility issues with. I didn't kill Letta, I don't care. And so Katano escapes. Someone has left bodies to frame her further. It wasn't me. Okay, Shaggy. Suspect killed three clones. Code Red. This is no time for Mountain Dew. Anakin using telepathy to try to talk down Ahsoka. Where are you? In your head, dummy. Ahsoka manages to hide from the dog, but is spotted getting her Batman on. Anakin tries to convince her to come back. No one will believe her. A lot of people are not believed by law enforcement if they have something unpopular to share, important message to communicate to the next generation, and that is, you know, by the end of this season, we know for sure, you know, yeah, she hadn't, she legitimately had nothing to do with it. It's made, you know, there's no, there's no doubt. I'm, I'm not sure how many people did believe it before, but the season finale leaves absolutely no doubt. To catch a Jedi. The Jedi Council now believe that Ahsoka Tano is the killer, and when the arrest order is shared on the street in the lower areas, Ahsoka Tano is easily spotted from where they're, you know, should be easy to spot from where they're doing that. I think the idea is to point out that she's currently doing a bad job of hiding, but when she's doing that bad of a job, you really expect someone to recognize her. Just have, like, after that happens, like, have the camera move over and she's, like, hiding in an alley behind... Like, she, she pops her head up from behind something, you know, but, it, yeah. You know, because I, I get, like, right after she goes and gets the a cloak from one of the, the goat aliens, so, yeah. Which, of course, necessitates, like, making it clear that, yeah, she wasn't hiding well enough before. The scene on the train is very, very tense. I did not expect people to guards to be outside when the the door of like when the door is open. I was like, okay, she's gonna run, but nope, there's guards right there. And the elevator is easily broken by destroying the obvious panel right next to it, as per usual for Star Wars. I I did laugh at the the thing with the button. You know, she's like, oh, okay, I gotta do this to to get out of here, and the and the kid's like, okay, I'll just I'm just gonna push the button, and it stops, and Ahsoka's like. Right. How much should I? How much do I pay you to never say this to anyone? Ventress attacks, but ends up allying with Ahsoka. I like that by the end of this episode, the mystery still hasn't been fully solved. This episode makes it clear there is someone other than Ventress, though Ahsoka suspects her. And Ahsoka promises she'll go to the Senate and beg her pardon. I really love seeing Ventress non-lethally take out clones. Probably would never have guessed that. But that, you know, that's a good way to, like, build towards, you know, being accepted back into polite society. Is like, no, no, I, I didn't kill any of them, you know. 
Um, and and it is like you know now that Ventress isn't working for Dooku, she does, you know, she's a bit more of an opportunist. And yeah, like her being, you know, basically like basically right now she has no allies. If she got a pardon, she could be part of the like I don't know that they would like trust her to be a member of the military or something, but she could live like. You know, she could, like, if, if she got attacked, she could call the cops, you know, hypothetically. So, she would be more protected. You know, right now, she's hiding in the lower levels of Coruscant. She has, you know, basically, yeah, there's there's not really anything protecting her any more than, you know, the other poor people. And, you know, I don't think poor people should exist when there are rich people, but, uh, you know, that's not Star Wars in the prequels, so. And there is an explosion, and the guards reveal themselves to not be cool guys, because they look at it, and the frame job for Ahsoka Tano is now even worse. Like, and this is legitimately clever, because, like, you know, when when you just hear, oh, she's gonna, she's gonna go to the place where the nano droids are, you know, it's like, oh, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a, there's definitely evidence there, clues or something. But when they find her there and arrest her, it's like, she was going to do it again. Whoops. That was, yeah. Like, often when that kind of thing happens in fiction, it's like, oh, come on. But here, it's, yeah. The wrong Jedi. And, yeah, they expel her from the Jedi Order. Great fight between Anakin and First Ventress, later Barriss. And I really appreciate, again, you know, with Ventress, like, they don't have her be one of these stupid Saturday morning cartoon villains who just... No, she's what she's doing and saying is very logical. I didn't do it. If you find my two lightsabers, you'll know who did it. And that's... Yeah, because, you know, obviously, Barris didn't give those back to her, although that would have been smart. But, yeah, she said, you know... I think they suit me, and it makes the episode, in, you know, it means that the episode can move faster, so. And I, I like that, you know, when, when he fights Barris, they actually end up in front of the, the younglings that we saw get uh, lightsaber crystals earlier in this very season. And, yeah, you know, they, they agree to allow... Ahsoka back, but she declines, and this is, of course, something that pushes Anakin away from the Jedi further. So this was the original ending to the show, before the Netflix episodes, and yeah, honestly, I, I mean, I'm glad that there's more to the show. I hear there's some really excellent stuff coming up, but I do think this would have been a, a pretty cool place to you know, because because one of the big things of this is why is Ahsoka Tano, you know, one of the biggest questions that this show raises is why is why is Ahsoka Tano nowhere in Revenge of the Sith, you know, and yeah, this answers that and yeah gets Anakin very close to the the dark side. But I am really glad there's more, and yeah, I'm gonna start watching it maybe later, probably later today, and. I should get to the review pretty soon since there's so few episodes. There's like, what is it, th 13 episodes the season, so that won't take me long at all. Maybe a week, but I'm not making any promises, but soon. Not less than a week. And yeah, uh, as usual, this is my new favorite season of the show, so yeah. Um, whether we're talking the overall season, the finale, or the season opener, the season finale of the season opener, yeah, um, worst to best, keeping in mind I love all of them, season one, season two, season three, four, and five of this, so, yeah, um, more please, and that brings us to, and I've already, that and uh, there we go. So, 
that is it. So yeah, uh, continue to really love the show. Um, I will try to do Mandalorian very very soon. It probably let's see. It is, the the episode is probably on Disney Plus now. Yeah. It wasn't before I started recording this. Last time I checked, at least. But, yeah. So, may the Force be with you.